hello! Dude, feels like it's, uh, like it's been a while, doesn't it? I almost don't even remember how to go about all this. Well, I'll, uh, I'll catch you up a bit on, on my life, I guess. You know, the artist in me would really love to say that I've been, I don't know, melancholy, distraught, lugubrious, if you will, but I'm really not. No, quite the contrary. The last month or so has been a slow but comforting stroll to the sunnier side of my emotions. A loosening of the noose around my metaphorical neck. I think I'm finally starting to find that long-term happiness that comes with accepting the fact that I'm dead. All right, hey, hey, welcome back uh, to Hanging Out with Sam. I've been really trying to make these just, these these big videos lately. I've been trying to shoot for the stars and really stretch myself out creatively and push the boundaries of what I'm used to, but you know what? I'm tired, I'm sick, my health is not that great physically or mentally. I just wanna hang out and watch some YouTube videos today, and I hope that's okay with you, so that's what we're gonna do, I just figured we'd hop around YouTube a little bit. Um. While kneeling in my life of disappointment, lying within my heart, I could not see. Regeneration, you know what regeneration? It means that in the beginning of the seed, was well, Adam was God's seed. But Satan took that seed away and put his seed in it. God said, I'll put enmity between your woman's seed and your seed. And so this Holy Ghost right in here is what the new seed is. He redeemed us. How did he redeem us? He regenerated us by Jesus, his seed. Satan won. <laughs> I want to welcome you to the program. Today we're going to tell you about the enemy, Satan. Call him, they call him the devil, Satan or Lucifer or whatever. It, the, the, and he's uh, invisible. Oh, and, that is a massive buff to have as the Prince of Darkness. You're invisible too? Who's, stop, who's stopping you now? Worst thing that ever happened. I want to welcome you to the program today. It's the worst thing that ever happened. But I was praying one day at a little tent, a 60 by 40 tent. I was praying in the afternoon for a word from God, and I fell out like a dead person. My arms felt heavy as lead, and there was a tunnel, a vortex they call it, opened up. And I could see the stars and heaven. I seen some of the preachers that had left the, this planet, oh, big preachers, William Brown and A.A. Allen and was over there. And they was listening to the voice that Jesus was speaking to me. And one of the things he said to me, he said, my voice will be heard again in the land. And I was thinking, that's great, you know. That was, that, that's great. Jesus is coming back, that's great. Am I just watching like one of my own videos right now? <laughs> this looks like my editing. We could check the trending tab. You know, why don't we just see what's what's new and happening? So it is that time again where I I move apartments and I make a rambly uh, off-the-cuff type video, uh, so I hope you're ready for that. I had my 21st birthday 
earlier this year in the same town that I was born in, and uh, there's something a little bit draining about turning and uh, becoming an adult in the city you were born in, and uh, uh, me and my girlfriend both both just figured it was time to get out. And with this move, and with my 21st year, uh, I have started to come to terms with a lot of things that I didn't realize I was struggling with over the last few years. One of the major ones being change. Um, I don't really know how to describe it, but uh, I think something we can all sort of relate to is a uh, disagreement with things being the same for too long. Now, whether that be political, social, or, or just where you happen to live, or the people you surround yourself with, the type of music you're listening to, I think we all could do with a little bit of change from time to time. And I don't think there's really any reason to dig into that philosophically or psychologically. I mean, it just sort of makes sense. Why would anyone or anything like to figuratively or literally be in the same room for the entirety of their lives? There comes this sort of dilemma or anxiety with consciousness where we realize how short our lives are and and, and the possibility of us not getting a second one or any sort of afterlife and, and how much we'd like to do with that life and how little we will probably be able to accomplish in that degree. Let's just see what's on the front page YouTube, huh? All right, now I don't know about you, but when I was in third grade, yo-yos were a big deal. Hey everybody, check out our sweet yo-yos. Aren't they sweet? Shitty, and uh, with yo-yos. Also, if you've ever been a kid, hit the like button down below the video. If you're not lying, it'll turn blue. What? Hit the subscribe button, hope you enjoy. Okay, who, who, who's, the, who's the grandpa? I know this is for kids. I know this is supposed to be children's content. Little advice to just any content creators out there, Cut this shit with asking for a like and subscribe before... It, like, if this was the first video I watched by you, which it fucking is, I'd know nothing about you. I The only thing I know this video is Among Us. Which, it's not like you made the game. So what, you're just trying to get cl just get more likes because you're playing Among Us? That's not how it works. That shouldn't... That shouldn't be how it works. Ah. Oh, oh, oh. ah! You just got done filling my entire island house with hacking potatoes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That sounds pretty fucking silly. Oh, you want to go? Let me go. Let me go. On these doors is heaven. That's crazy. Is that oh, supposed yeah. to be? I know I'm dropping like no original takes here, but really it's a pretty easy formula to making kids videos. You just got to come up with a large quantity of something in a small place so as to seem exaggerated and quite silly. Uh, and if you don't know what to talk about, just scream as loud as you can, or just make some weird noise. I have found it to be incredibly relieving uh, to be in a different city and to have to get to know my surroundings all over again, find new local places to eat, and, and what's fun to do in the area, and, and meet some new people, find a new place to work, get some new acquaintances, try some new drugs. What? And going off of things that make sense about wanting to change your surroundings, I think when it comes to changing your surroundings, it should just follow suit that you're gonna want some other sort of psychological change. Whether it be like some sort of New Year's resolution, wanting to eat differently, or, or exercise more, or go for a walk in the new local park that you've just moved next to. But for me, something that I've been struggling with that uh, I think might need to start to be a big change in my life is... Uh, and well, this this may come as no surprise to some people, but... Uh, I, I very much think that empathy is one of the most important traits that human beings across the board can have. I think it is probably one of the few things that could be a, a basic key factor to coming as close as we can to a utopia. But I've noticed something with getting older that, uh, that has really just made me shudder, and that is that sort of stubborn old person, well, if I've gotten to this point in my life, I think that I, I ought to have known better by now, so if I know better, then it must be right. It must not be wrong. I have gone this long in my life without ever experiencing this problem, so this problem must be temporary and or not real. And in my case, there comes this sort of, well, I consider myself a fairly empathetic person, and I've gone so many years trying to be as empathetic as possible, so if at this point there's something that I cannot empathize with, it must be impossible to empathize with something like that. And stuff like that, I think, is incredibly dangerous to hold in your mind, any sort of stubborn... As much as I like to surround myself with new information and learn new things, I find myself struggling with that stubborn refusal of new information sometimes. Talk or film or record anything. I'm very low-key on social media. 
so now you guys can get to know me a bit more I'm gonna do my makeup. It's kind of tropical outside, so I'm just I gonna don't know who this is, but put a little on. Is there like a reason this is trending? Oh, she's in a relationship with somebody famous. Aiden Lucky. Oh, okay, gotcha. It's somebody named Aiden. It's just his girlfriend, I guess. I love clumpy lashes. I'm a little serum to my face. Usually I put wing liner, but everybody's been hating on me on social media. Like, you wear too much makeup, so now I don't wear anything. I actually don't look at myself in the mirror. I was actually kind of sad. Social media is too fucking mean. Be whatever you want to be. And stop being so fucking judgmental online. Apparently it's gonna rain. Apparently there's no service. I don't have my own ticket. So I was gonna vlog the uh, event, but I might not be vlogging anything. Something interesting could have happened in this video, but I guess she'll just sit in her hotel room and just blabber on to fill time. Like, she's acting like she had to make this video and she's just trying to think of things to buy the time. And it's like, you're clearly not having fun with this. Just don't. This is so uncomfortable. Everything about this feels so unnatural. Stop being so fucking judgmental online. But I think it was something that I saw actually earlier today that made me kind of really start to think about things differently. It was a, a quote that the, the ever-famous PragerU YouTube channel posted in their community tab, and it was a C.S. Lewis quote um, about how if, if everyone in the world appears to be running towards a cliff and jumping off, uh, if you go in the opposite direction, then you will appear to be insane, according to everyone else. Um, which, you know, I'm sure, you know, a lot of us used to hear quotes like that when we were younger and think, wow, man, that is so fucking prolific. You are so... You're so cool! How did you even think of that? You freaking silly goose. But now when I hear quotes like that, I I'm kind of confused because it's like they just solved an extremely simple puzzle that they created. It's like they kind of just cut up a picture into four squares and then immediately solved it because they didn't rearrange the pieces at all. I don't think any conflict ever in anyone's life is ever that simple as people just running off a cliff and jumping off without any care in the world, any regard for their life, just like, well, don't care, I'm gonna keep running regardless of whether or not there's ground. While we would love to exaggerate and think that some people do act like that with their political decisions and how they think and how they treat other people, there's a little something called, uh, uh, what's it called? Like, rash rational choice theory or something like that. Let me, let me, let me see what we got. According to the definition of rational choice theory, every choice that is made is completed by first considering the costs, risks, and benefit of making that decision. Choices that seem irrational to one person may make perfect sense to another based on the individual's desires. While some things may be near impossible to understand how they could have possibly reached that conclusion given the context, I think it is equally apathetic and ignorant to assume that anyone reached their decision based off purely idiotic ideals and standpoints. It's easy to say that somebody who won't wear a mask because it's uncomfortable and they don't care if somebody else gets sick because they know they won't die from it. It's easy to say stuff like that is extremely apathetic and stupid, but it's pretty equally apathetic or stupid to say that that person has n no thoughts. Oftentimes you'll find that a lot of these anti-maskers or anti-vaxxers have qualms about where the vaccines came from, why we have to wear masks, the efficacies of how they work and stuff like that. And I'm not saying necessarily they're all super smart uh, questions. Uh, even some of the people who seem the most clueless and the most hateful often have the best intentions at heart. And after all, we do live in an era where just appealing to the most exaggerated of our emotions is is what seems to appeal most to us, so, uh... Oh. My. Gosh. What on earth? What did you... Wow, new car. What the fuck is this? This has 5.2 million views! And 100% it's for the TikToks themselves. So just go, just go on TikTok. Let them influence you to make your own art. You can't just watch a TikTok and be like, give me the money because I included the TikToks in my video. Uh. 
I mean, oh yeah, that fucking sucks. I thought she was gonna say she wanted it in red. But no, new well, no, car, let me no complaints, exactly. only. No, she just, she just <laughs> fell Literally over. Literally dropped oh, to the and floor. I'm uh, yes, I'm oh, grateful, I'm but also lightheaded. Exactly. Dancing, carrying a coffin, and I've only seen the memes of this, not the actual video. Oh, hell no. The remains came out, they fell out. Did you see? The thing that the camera was pointed directly at that literally anyone who was watching this video would have seen happen because they were watching the video. Everybody was like, oh, no, 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 this ain't my job. This was not on the syllabus. Ah, oh, come on, guys, we got to. We have to. It's literally our job. We dropped it. The lowest tier content. The lowest tier content. Speaking of which, why don't we check in on our friend who has over 2 million subscribers now. Let's see if his content has changed much. Millard, what's your favorite coworker story? So I think the best times I've ever had at Subway was when me and Jeremy would get dead and just have the deepest conversation. It was weird because literally in December of 2019, we would talk about how cool it would be to be YouTubers. And now a little under two years later, that's what we're doing. When the point of your content is how interesting the place you work at is, and somebody says, what is your favorite coworker story of your like seven years at Subway? All the goofs and gaffs, the ups and downs, the topsy turvies. What's your favorite moment? And Malad, Malad says, talking with my friend when it got slow. Malad, I don't think I could deal with it. That's fucking everybody's favorite thing about their I'm getting, I'm getting a bit worked up, okay? I'm getting a bit worked up, because I'll tell you what, this ain't nothing new. This whole low effort content to make money this ain't nothing new baby this is america this is capitalism baby this is the innovation it breeds case in point here's a movie from i believe the 80s samurai cop yes it's from 1989 and uh let's just check out a little scene from it shall we hello hi how is he do you think he'd be able to ask a few questions no way his lips are burned so what he'll never be able to talk again Oh, he'll talk again, but you just have to give him a couple of weeks. Next time, guys, catch him in one piece. Thanks, nurse. Do you like what you see? I love what I see. Would you like to touch what you see? Yes. Yes, I... Before we go any farther, this is not a porno. This is not a porno. It's a real movie. It was made. Seriously, like, unironically, to be a real movie. To be taken seriously. By people. Seriously. Would you like to go out with me? Uh, yes I would. Would you like to fuck me? <laughs> what the fuck? Have you been circumcised? Yeah, I have. Why? Well, your doctor must have cut a big portion of it off. No, he, uh, he was a good doctor. Good doctors make mistakes, too. That's why they buy insurance. Hey, don't worry. I got enough. It's big. I want bigger. I grow tired of these antics. Oh, look at this silly video online. Marvel at these fools dancing their little clown dances and their little gesture threads. Why does this feel pointless? Why does this feel like a never-ending cycle of us versus them mentalities stomping out any chance at approaching a general empathy, a general kindness? As harmless as it feels, don't send hate to these people, we say. It's all just for laughs. Uh, but at the same time, why is there this insatiable itch? This primal need to let someone know when they're being fucking stupid, or to at least laugh amongst your friends about it. Perhaps it's out of love for humanity, wanting them to be their best and not whatever this is. But sometimes so much of the discourse around these things can be so counterproductive. Just laughing at someone who's living or behaving much worse than you, so you feel a bit less shitty about your life, I guess? To want change, it feels like you constantly have to live in the negative. It slowly kills you, chipping away your spirit, but to simply let it go as something out of your control is just how the problems persist. And maybe it'd be easier if these problems were a universal experience, if we could unite around a cause and decide enough is enough. 
But something that bothers one person might be just the way another one wants it. Vice versa. Versa vice. Nice. It's like a hair stuck in the microphone. It's been in here for a while, but like I just really want to get it out. I got it with my tooth. That's kind of gross. I know I sound like a fucking douchebag who's like, wow, I'm so cool that I'm considering someone else's perspective. And I know that that should be kind of basic at this point, but I think, uh, think regardless of who you are, we've reached a point in which that can be very hard to do given the drastic amount of people there are, the drastic amount of voices screaming online all the time, each and all of, of, of many different experiences and opinions. It can be hard to not sort of just be defensive and be emotional about these things and, and not really hold all possible outcomes and perspectives in your head because if you do, your head's gonna really hurt, it's gonna like blow up. And also it can be just, just much less exciting to, to, uh, to to be calm and rational about everything. I mean, it's much more fun to, uh, to call someone a fucking idiot, <laughs> isn't it? But regardless, uh, I think the best thing that anyone can do moving forward is to make something productive with their opinions. I think my main problem, regardless of what the opinion is, is that a lot of opinions tend to just be destructive of other people's opinions. You know, I think that take is fucking stupid. I think this I song video is goddamn garbage. Blows nuts. Suck absolute chode. But maybe, just maybe, we're all at least a little bit right, right? Maybe, as crazy as all these ideas and opinions and Reddit conspiracy threads can be, each of us at least thinks we're being rational, doing what we think is most important for ourselves and usually, hopefully, for other people. And another maybe, what if we're all getting a little depressed, even if we might not know it? I mean, think about it. Nobody wants things to be the exact same for their entire lives, even if they may think they do. And when you look at the current state of the country, there isn't much progress or change at all. I mean, sure, gay marriage is now legal. Cis people are putting pronouns in their bio. The, uh, uh, gay marriage is legal now. But I mean, president to president, the majority of the crises facing our country persist. Whether it be the Middle East, immigration, gun control. If anything, most of the problems are just getting worse. The planet is heating up faster and faster. The rich are getting richer while the poor fall deeper and deeper into poverty. And corporations are monopolizing every aspect of our existence and every single transaction we make. And when we scream, riot, protest, vote, vandalize, scream some more, kneel for the pledge, make petitions and everything we can think of and not a single thing shows any semblance of change, yeah, something starts to happen in people. I don't know exactly what yet, but I think we're all kind of feeling it, aren't we? A severe disconnect between the powers that be and the people that need. The people who bear all the fruits of all the successes of our nation while following none of the rules and facing none of the consequences. And I mean, shit like this, the stupid trending content, the stupid TikTok content, the stupid Mulad from Subways in the world, it's really not that hard to understand them when you think about it. I mean, what do young people have at this point in time? They're faced with the option of finding some company to work for. 99.9% .9 of the time, they're not going to find a job that they absolutely love and are excited to spend their life working with and giving all their energy towards. The majority of the time, they're gonna find something that at best they're okay with, that pays the bills and doesn't make them wanna blow their brains out at the end of the day. When it comes to these YouTubers, what are they gonna do? Risk trying to be themselves and make their own art and have it not go well, not get any views, lose a lot of subscribers, not be able to pay rent that month, and then just get, go have to work for some company that makes them wanna blow their brains out? Or should they do what they know plays it safe? Marketing towards kids, using bright colors, silly faces, the title, don't cuss Kids are too dumb to really differentiate so what is good art and what is bad art. Child. I'm kind of going off at a tangent now, but uh, you get my point. I uh, I spend too long treating these people like they're, they're part of the problem, like they're just putting out this anti-art, but they're just a, a symptom of the problem. They aren't the source of the problem. We unfortunately uh, live in a society uh, that uh, values capital above anything else, but there's, there's, no, there's no equivalence with that capital. There's no, well, it's really being smart that makes you money, or it's really being super innovative that makes you money. There's people who are rich as hell in this country off of beautiful artistic expressions and innovations, being engineers, doctors, people who have innovated the country and brought it to the next phase. And there's people who are billionaires off of cheating and lying and stealing. So all my rants and rambles about things that seem to not be connected to each other at all, what's my takeaway here? 
I want things to change. I want change, but why do I want change and what do I want that change to be? I'll I'll get back to you. <laughs> Have you noticed that most of the discourse between the right and the left, whether it be online or on stage, tends to involve lots of call-outs of hypocrisy? Allegations of rigged elections, airstrikes in foreign countries, bailing on campaign promises, Ooh. and maybe, and just maybe, it's because of subjective rationality. We're able to follow our own thought processes, and sometimes even those of someone we like and tend to agree with, and thus rationalizing any decisions made following this general train of thought is much easier. You know how sometimes you make some panic move while driving and maybe blow a stop sign or swerve out of your lane a little and you're like, man, that was dumb, but I'm not a bad driver, I was just reacting. But then when some random car just blows a stop sign that it should have been your turn on, all you can see is some coconut head who apparently took driving lessons at a taco joint. When a driver becomes angry, their road rage may be expressed with many different behaviors such as using the horn or lights excessively, name calling, shouting insults, or, or even taking language, more extreme and violent actions. Hand or body gestures Instead, you can use you take things. When you have no idea the thought process, anyone else's decisions, opinions, rationalities, and everything else just seem random. And depending on how different you might be from them, it can just seem outright stupid. So is everything, all of this, just a case of Everyone thinking that they're rational, and everyone around them is brainless and undignified. Well, that's a, that's a difficult question to answer, obviously. For one, it's almost impossible to trace back the root of all evils in the world, especially to one specific place. At a certain point, the world becomes so complex with emotion and with ideas that it seems easier to just work with what we've got and try to do the best we can. And secondly, just no. There is some seriously fucked up shit going on out there, and there are people in particular that we can and should be pointing the finger at. Companies that have major monopolies over certain industries, massive oil tycoons and fossil fuel frackers, the politicians whose only consistency is in their ability to disappoint their people and sustain civil unrest across the board. But with these two sides constantly bickering and accusing each other of the same shit year after year, only for nothing to ever actually seemingly get done, wouldn't it help if we weren't just following suit? I and mean, after all, half the shit you see in political threads is just buzzwords thrown around over and over again in this repetitive loop with no minds being changed, no ground being furthered, and no real difference between before and after the conversation except probably just more anger and dejection towards the other side. It's been said many times that life is nothing but cycles, waxing and waning, yin and yang, the food chain of life and death itself. Yeah, but this cycle we're in? This never-ending back and forth of apathetic insults, belittling character, tensions lasting from generation to generation, nationwide wars being waged, it feels less than pointless. At least something as seemingly pointless as life itself, even at its bleakest, offers some beauty just in its existence. I think the war in the Middle East is a perfect example. Trillions of dollars spent, over 22,000 civilian lives lost, absolutely no progress made. A pointless cycle that produces nothing but pain, suffering, and tragedy on both sides. With what we've spent on this senseless massacre alone, we could have built nationwide high-speed railways. We could have eradicated homelessness completely for about 300 years. We could have done just about anything that would have been more productive or beneficial to us or to anyone else. Is it really fucking Jesus Christ. I guess I should uh, reach a conclusion here. I just have this gut-wrenching fear that, uh, that this won't work out and that I'll have to just uh, work a job for the rest of my life that I just have to kind of meet in the middle with and be like, yeah, all right, that sounds okay. I guess I won't kill myself yet. But at the end of the day, I think, uh, your life is your life, no matter what you're doing, and uh, setting yourself up to say, you know, if I don't have my life exactly this way, then I won't enjoy my life. 
my, my, is is a bit yeah, it's a bit silly. I think you're you're allowed to enjoy your life no matter what. And uh, who's to say you can't be creative in every little aspect of your life? Who's to say that that you need to to be able to do it for work to be able to be creative? My, huh? My, my, who's who says that? I think life is a lot about give and take. Um, and uh, you can't expect life to just do all the giving. Sometimes uh, you're gonna have to take what life gives you and then mix in a little bit of your own flair to make your life the way you want it to be. Uh, or something like that. But... Is there a solution? Do I have one? Maybe something about finding a healthy middle ground in all things, whether it be social, political, or emotional. And maybe something about being creative and sharing the parts of your experience that you want to share. Or hey, maybe some weird spiritual shit about all of us together being God and each of our experiences being just as valuable as the next or something like that. <laughs> Heck if I know, partner. My videos never have any real point to them anyway, do they? Now, all this was going nowhere in particular and it might as well not even exist, I guess. And just like us. Shit. Round and round as the nature flows It's like one big ring Caterpillars eat plants Small birds eat caterpillars Big birds eat small birds Bacteria eats the dead Big bird from their plants grow Again caterpillar it's the plan How natural, no waste It is an endless chain What an amazing